now sometime uh, people may ask why do you use wooden stick in ice creams when you enjoy a bar ice cream bar you have to uh, have a wooden stick in this ice cream bar why not plastics why not fibers uh, some maverick among you may say plastic is nuisance wood is cheap uh, that may be because of practical consideration but when you eat expensive ice creams we don't look for two three rupees of plastic sticks would you would you mind to have a plastic stick but we don't have a plastic stick no matter how expensive that ice cream is then why why don't we have a plastic stick why do we always have a wooden stick the problem is if you have a plastic stick in ice cream what will happen is after enjoying some amount of ice cream when you put that ice cream upside down very smoothly that ice cream will come out of your sticks and all you will be having is only stick and ice cream will fall down because what will happen is when ice cream starts to melt and when the inner layer of ice cream will melt then the bond between this plastic or the pressure by which this ice cream was pressed into the plastic stick will no more be operating and it will become very smooth very very nicely it will come out very very without without any effort and energy you can bring that plastic stick stick out and will come without any much of the effort or energy if you make it upside down very previously this ice cream will fall down so you won't be able to enjoy your ice cream bar for very long either you have to eat it very fast or you have to bring it in a plate and then eat with a spoon so enjoyment will be lost why then why there's it strongly bonded with a wooden stick with wooden stick wood is made up of bamboo bamboo wood is uh, that plastic stick is made up of that that wooden stick is made up of wood wood has cellulose fiber cellulose have hydroxy groups lots of hydroxy groups attached to carbon chain like this you have a main carbon chain and then you have hydroxy groups on those on that long carbon chain this hydroxy group has a hydrogen attached to oxygen and a hydrogen attached to a oxygen is potent enough to make a hydrogen bond so the hydrogen from here and the oxygen from water of the ice cream would be making a hydrogen bond like this a hydrogen from the wooden stick the hydroxy group of the wooden stick will be forming a hydrogen bond with oxygen of the water present in the ice cream and also this oxygen of the hydroxy group of the wooden stick will be forming a hydrogen bond with a hydrogen of water and in turn again there will be hydrogen bonding with another oxygen so this will be a kind of system that will be bonded to each other so this bond will not be broken very easily and that stick will be holding the ice cream to till you have the last lick of your ice cream so this will hold together that ice cream because of hydrogen bond because of this reason you have a wooden stick in your ice cream right next we come to a problem suppose i have a system having water and i'm pumping in some gas here that gas can be any gas when i pump this uh, hydrogen gas to into the bottom of this container then some bubbles bubble out bubble out when i see from the top and i can see some bubble coming out of this beaker because of the gas being pumped from the bottom that gas would come out it will bubble it will bubble out and we can observe some bubbles coming out but when we insert ammonia gas i keep looking and no bubbles come out the question is why why there's no bubbling when we insert ammonia 
when you pump in ammonia but there's bubbling when you pump in nitrogen gas or hydrogen gas but in case of ammonia there's no bubble at all why why now if there is no bubble then somehow this ammonia must be absorbed by the water preventing it from coming out and bubbling and then absorption would be because of some bonding between water and ammonia and what that bond can be it cannot be a covalent or ionic bond because octet of all the atoms are complete in water in ammonia this must be some kind of attraction it can't be van der waal force of attraction because van der waal force of attraction is there for nitrogen and hydrogen as well but they bubbles out ammonia does not there must be some kind of strong force of attraction that is there in ammonia but there's not in nitrogen or hydrogen right so there's a hydrogen here in a nitrogen and hydrogen here is a hydrogen which is attached to nitrogen and that gives us some clue because hydrogen attached to fluorine oxygen and nitrogen are special hydrogen they are potent potent to form a hydrogen bond so this ammonia can form this ammonia can form a hydrogen bond and in fact ammonia has three hydrogen ammonia has three hydrogen and it will be forming three hydrogen bond with water plus there's a lone pair on nitrogen that will also participate in hydrogen bonding so there will be sufficient amount of bonding between water and hydrogen and this will be so strong that not a single molecule of ammonia will bubble out it will all be absorbed into the water so because so because of hydrogen bonding the solubility of ammonia gas in water is tremendously incredibly high so no amount of gas will be bubbling out it will be all be absorbed within the water because of hydrogen bonding now now you must have encountered already this question somewhere this is the pet questions of school teachers they keep on asking this in exams in class in viva voice they ask you student tell us which one is stronger acid ortho nitrophenol or para nitrophenol uh which one is a strong acid ortho nitrophenol or para nitrophenol which one is a acid both are acid why both are acid both have hydrogen atom attached to a electronegative atom though it can be removed off in plus of h in form of h plus and forming a conjugate base which will be stable enough by the virtue of negative charge on electronegative atoms so both are acids all right now which one is more acidic now to answer this the one which will be forming which will which will uh lose h plus ion with greater ease that will be more acidic and the one which will be forming more stable conjugate base that will be most acidic all right let's see let's first of all draw the conjugate base if you remove off h plus whatever is left out that is a conjugate base if you remove off hydrogen you'll be left with a negative charge on oxygen because hydrogen will be removed as h plus leaving behind its electron that will be going into the orbital of oxygen making it negatively charged so this is ortho nitrophenoxide ion and here we have para nitrophenoxide ion let's say about stability stability how do you look stability for stability you look basically three factors inductive effect hyperconjugation resonance but the order to be looked at is resonance then hyperconjugation and inductive effect resonance you'll be having resonance with the benzene ring here here same you'll be having resonance into the nitro group because it is at ortho you'll be having resonance into nitro group because it is at para resonance operates from ortho and para so the resonance extent of resonance will be same in both these two cases now we have drawn already the resonating structures when we studied resonance no i don't feel a need to draw it again i do feel that you are mature enough sincere enough to study those things sincerely and remember them by now so you do understand how to draw the resonating structures and you do appreciate that the extent of resonance in both the ions would be the same 
both will have five resonating structures and in both the cases NO2 group will participate in resonance. Had it been at meta position then NO2 group would have not participated in resonance and that would have made it a weaker conjugate base, unstable conjugate base and a weaker acid. But here ortho and para both participate in the resonance so the extent of resonance is same there is no hyper conjugation inductive effect is the weakest effect we look at inductive effect when we don't have anything else to look at here we do have something to look at what is it now on from here whenever you look at hydrogen attached to oxygen or nitrogen or fluorine some twist must be there in your brain and you must think of something that would be hydrogen bond you must think of a possibility of hydrogen bond that will twist the game around if you don't have hydrogen bond if you don't have any inductive if you don't have any other of force of attraction then you will look at inductive effect here we will not look at inductive effect here we will look at hydrogen bond now hydrogen bond if i draw the properly the structure in which this ortho nitro phenol will exist would be like this this is the structure in which this ortho nitro phenol will exist this is the hydrogen bond that we are showing with dotted line because it's electronegative atom because it's of second group there will be hydrogen bonding between hydrogen and oxygen this hydrogen is electron sufficiently electron deficient because it is operating because it is attached to oxygen all right now we don't need to say this over and over again for us whenever hydrogen is attached with fluorine nitrogen or oxygen or fluorine oxygen or nitrogen hydrogen bond will be there provided the other atom is also fluorine nitrogen or oxygen in this case we have a hydrogen bond here here uh, do we have a hydrogen bond now this nitro group or the oxygen of this nitro group is too far away to provide a hydrogen uh, electronic wave like this this is not possible all right so this OH group will have no hydrogen bond that statement is false the true statement would be this hydrogen will have no hydrogen bond with this nitrogen it can have a hydrogen bond with other nitrogen you will have other para nitro phenols and of that other para nitro phenol you can have a hydrogen bond like this right this is intramolecular intramolecular means within the molecule without any external assistance or without participation of any external molecule something is happening within the molecule this is the intra hydrogen bond this is inter hydrogen bond between two inter inter means between two molecules between two groups so this is intra this is inter so all right this would be the rule of thumb for you and try and, uh, and remember this intra things are always more effective and always more stronger be it uh, any stabilizing factor be it the rate of attack be it hydrogen bond intramolecular hydrogen bond will be stronger than intermolecular hydrogen bond here I'll be giving you explanation elsewhere I may not give you some explanation for this but this this will be the general rule that you will be remembering intra effects will be stronger than inter effects now here intramolecular hydrogen bond will be stronger because it is forming a six member ring and six member ring because there's a chelation there's a ring formation that brings about stability plus there's symmetry this is planar there's no hindrance from other molecules here you'll be having lots of other molecules so there will be competition and there will be clustering of other molecules here so there'll be crowding there is no fixed pattern there is no ring formation there's no chelation so this kind of hydrogen bonding will not be effective so although I have shown you here, teacher will desist you from explaining and they will say there will be no hydrogen bonding. There will be hydrogen bonding, not effective one, not as effective as it is in case of intramolecular hydrogen bonding. So the extent of hydrogen bonding in orthonitrophenol is much more than the extent of hydrogen bonding which is there in paranitrophenol because of interhydrogen bonding. But this is a rule of thumb that you have to remember intra effects will be stronger than inter effects. Considering this, now let's ask the question again, which is a better acid? Which is a better acid? Meaning, which will lose its H plus more easily? The one which loses more easily is a better acid. Now, this H hydrogen is attached with a strong bond. 
Now this hydrogen is as, as such trapped by two oxygen atoms. So it will not be easy for this hydrogen to move out or it will not be easy for another base to abstract away this hydrogen. Comparatively here the hydrogen is bonded with a weaker bond it will be more easy for the hydrogen to move out. So considering this force of attraction that is hydrogen bond the hydrogen in orthonitrophenol will be difficult to be trapped out than paranitrophenol that makes orthonitrophenol a weaker acid than paranitrophenol. That's the explanation.